In this video, we're going to discuss the use of basic data types. Variables and constants, which we introduced in the last video, hold data. This data comes in a variety of form known as its data type. Now you need to be aware of the following five data types for your exam. We've got integers. These can store whole numbers, both positive and negative. We have reals, which are sometimes referred to in other languages as floats. And these are capable of containing positive and negative numbers that have a fractional component, like minus 1.25. We then have the char data type. This holds a single character. And we have the string data type. And this can hold a sequence of characters. And finally, we have the Boolean data type. This can store the logical values either true or false. Each data type uses a different amount of memory. And to optimize your programs, the correct data type should be used. For example, there's little point in storing the whole number 22 as a real data type when the integer data type would be perfectly acceptable and take up less memory. Let's have a look at a simple Python program written that's called Beat the Dice. It allows the player to roll two dice. The order of the dice is determined by the value and the highest value comes first. And if, for example, they roll a four and a six, the output would then be six, four. We're joining the two numbers together with the biggest one first. So we can see here in this line, we're using two variables called dice one and dice two. We know from looking at the roller dice subroutine at the top of the screen, that we're always going to be storing the numbers one through six, which makes sense because we're simulating the roll of a standard six-sided dice. As dice one and dice two will only ever be whole numbers, we're gonna use the integer data type to store them. Now, as we've mentioned before, Python doesn't actually require you to declare variables and their data types before you use them, which is what's required in most programming languages and the exam board need you to know about. So the way Python's working here is the first time we go to assign a value to the dice one and dice two variable, it looks at that value and works out the data type it thinks the variable should be. So when we get dice one equals zero and dice two equals zero, that's the first time we're placing a value into those variables. It sees it's an integer, so sets those variables to be an integer data type. Now this is nice and quick and convenient to make pro, uh, programming in Python quite easy, but it's actually quite lazy and sometimes potentially quite dangerous, which is why the exam board want you to understand how to declare variables and their data types. The program then compares the numbers. Depending on which is greater, we concatenate or join them together. Now to concatenate the numbers and not simply add them together, we need to store them as the string data type. So let's pretend the dice one variable holds eight and the dice two variable holds five. If dice one and dice two are integers, then dice one plus dice two is 13, eight plus five is 13. But if dice one and dice two are strings, then dice one and two is eight and five because we've joined two strings together, not added two numbers together. It is easy to convert string data types back to integers or indeed other data types so we can perform arithmetic operations on their values. We often ask users to enter numbers via the keyboard, but those values are input as characters or strings, even though we often want to store them internally and then manipulate them as numbers. So we do what's called data casting, which converts one data type to another. Now this is strictly beyond the IGCSE syllabus. You don't need to understand about data type casting, but it's such a common function you perform in programming and supported by all languages that we thought we'd mention it here anyway. So here we're showing you how these concepts will look in your exam paper following the Cambridge IGCSE pseudocode format. 
and this is listed towards the back of your syllabus. That's everything you need to know from this video. Pause now and take some notes. Thank you.